Hey everyone, this is Blendmaster here with another tutorial, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to create this cool abstract wireframe wallpaper inside of Blender. So let's get started. I just want to quickly mention though that I've noticed more than half of the views that I get are coming from people that haven't subscribed to my channel yet. So if that's you, all I'm asking is that you please subscribe to my channel. It's just one click of the mouse and it really means a lot and I would appreciate it if you guys subscribe so please subscribe if you haven't already anyways let's get started with this tutorial first thing we want to do is delete the cube and the lamp and I'm also going to head over to cycles render now we're going to add in a plane and I'm going to rotate it on the x-axis by 90 degrees I'm going to go to front view and orthographic view and we'll tab into edit mode I'm going to scale it up by pressing S and then 5 and then I'll press W to bring up this menu here and click subdivide. And over here on the tool side, tool menu, we're going to bring the number of cuts up to 10. I'm also going to increase this fractal value to 0.5 so we can get some random distortion and noise. That's looking pretty good. But instead of these uh, squares or quads that we have here, we want to get some triangles. So to do that, all you have to do is press control T and it instantly adds triangles to everything. So that's good. Now what I want to do is duplicate this two times and on this plane we want to add a wireframe modifier and set the thickness to 0 0.05. And on the other plane we're actually going to add in a particle system. This is going to be a hair system. You want to check advanced uh, have the particles emit from the verts and uncheck random. And for the number, this is going to depend on how many vert vertices you have on your plane. So just to check that, tab into edit mode and make sure you have everything selected. If you come up here, you can see how many vertices there are. And there's 144. So we can type in 144 for our number and come down to the render settings, uncheck emitter, check object, and we're going to add in an icosphere for our object. Let's just move that out the way, select our plane again, and for our object, select Icosphere. And just like that, it's already starting to come together. You might want to bring the size down a little to 0.03. That's looking good. I want to give this Icosphere a subsurf modifier, level 2, and then give it some smooth shading. I'm also going to give this a glossy material. Whoops, not glass, I want glossy make it pure white and set the roughness to zero just like that and we want the wireframe to have the same exact material as well now I'm going to hide both of those planes and this icosphere and we're going to select our first plane here tab into edit mode and press alt E and under this menu we want to select individual faces so right now it's extruding all of these faces individually separate from one another now, if I right click now it just uh, applies what we did but it doesn't move them anywhere and if we press control I we can invert our selection and we can delete those vertices and basically what we've done now is separate all of these faces so that they're no longer connected and we can select everything and press P to separate them by loose parts tab out of edit mode and set the origin to geometry I'm gonna hold shift and right click this triangle here give it a new material and press control L so we can link all of these uh, planes to the same material. Now we can open up our node editor here and start to edit this material. First thing I want to do though is add in a environment texture. So you can use any texture you want. I'm just using this environment texture. And I'm also going to add in another plane and this one's going to have an emission shader so that we can light our scene also. So make it pure white, give it a strength of 1, and then scale it up like that above our plane, and then move it back so it's right about there. Let's go to render view and take a look. So right now they all have the same color, which is not what we want. We actually want them to have some random variation. So we're going to bring in a object info node with the random output plug that in 
and I'm gonna put in a color ramp here in between whoops color ramp and we want to set this to constant and we're gonna take this white slider and position it exactly halfway at 0.5 so now what it's doing is randomly picking which faces will have what color and 50% of them will be black while the other 50% is white but we don't want our colors to be black and white we actually want them to be a light blue and a dark blue so I'm just going to set those colors like that and that's looking good but I also want to add some extra variation with the saturation and value so we can add a, another uh, color ramp node or we can actually just duplicate this one plug in the random output and we're going to make this a white color or actually a gray color we want to set the value to 0.75 and then this one will have a value of 1 and we can change this from constant to linear and now if we add in a hue saturation value node we can plug this color ramp into both the saturation and the value and basically what it's doing is taking a random value that's in between 1 and 0.75 and plugging it into the saturation. So this one could have a saturation of 0.75, while this one has like 0.9 and this one might have 1. And basically that's all we're doing. So not that hard. I want to add in a glossy shader. Shift A, glossy, I'm going to add a mix shader. I want to set the roughness of this to... 0.1 but right now it doesn't look that good because it's a white color I want it to be more blue so I'm just gonna plug that in there it's a little too saturated so I'll duplicate this and decrease the saturation of 0.75 that's looking pretty good I still want it to be a little more blue so I'm gonna add in a mix RGB node here switch it to add we're going to add in a blue color so something like that kind of blue and if we press M to mute it we can see the difference it's just slightly more bluish I like that so we'll keep it like that and now we have to add some scratches so I'm gonna duplicate the mix shader and the glossy shader and for this glossy shader we're going to set the roughness to zero so let's take a look and we don't want this to be mixing as a factor like this we actually want to use an image to affect how it's mixing so let's add in a texture coordinate node over here add in a image texture and you can use any scratch image that you have I'm just going to use this one that I've made in blender and I'm going to add in a mapping node and take the object output and plug it in. And if we take a look here, it looks pretty good, except I want to shrink it by increasing the scale to 10 by 10 by 10. And that's looking good. I want to duplicate both of these again. And this time we can play with the rotation of this, just randomly change it and let's take a look and that's looking pretty good it doesn't have to be perfect just want some randomness I'm going to bring that back down to 60 that looks a lot better and we can add a mix RGB node again and then add both of these with a factor of 1 and then just take this and plug it into our factor over here and if we take a look you can see wherever it was white we're getting a hundred percent reflectivity it's looking pretty nice so let's unhide everything now press control alt zero to snap our camera to view I'll select my camera and then just position it right where I want it like there and you can also change the um, dimensions of the camera so it could be 1080 by 1920 if you wanna use it for a phone background but you can also use it for a background for your desktop if you want. This is the perfect uh, resolution. 
So I'm going to render this out right now and I'll come back when it's done. Alright, so it's done rendering and it looks pretty nice. I just rendered this at about 100 samples. You could render it out at a little more if you like. And you can take this into the compositor and tweak it with the RGB curves and color correction if you want. But I like it just how it is. I'm actually going to come over here to the scene settings though. And under color management I'm going to switch it from default to film. That just darkens it and makes it look a little cooler, I think. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. If you have any suggestions for future tutorials, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye.